What is going on, everybody? This is episode 576 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here once again with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. I know it's Tuesday, but today we are finally back from the weekend. Brett, how are you feeling? I feel great. I feel fantastic. I don't believe you for some reason. I fantastic. I feel great. Uh, I mean, you're not at 100%, but that's okay. We're going to pull through today. I was, uh, I was, uh, I can't actually have the cough drops. I remember I, I had cough drops on one episode of IRL, and it was just driving Surge nuts because it's like you have to like pull it away from the microphone, <laughs> you know, because otherwise it makes noise. You could just put the microphone next to your mouth while you chew on a cough drop. <laughs> That's the show. Just two hours. Every, everyone of, will super chat about it. Two hours of cough drop ASMR. We just yeah. make thousands of dollars. It'd be fantastic. Do you want to turn yourself up so that we can all hear you? Or are you just going to yell the whole time? I'm, I'm not going to yell. Is my audio okay. good? My audio is so, good. You sound good. OK. You we're, sound we're good. good. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to turn my audio up, though. We could do that. Uh, maybe perhaps in the future I will, uh, I will do cough drop ASMR. Guys, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. You'll have to bear with me a little bit because I am still feeling a tad bit under the weather. I was yesterday as well. Uh, but we're going to get through this. And number one today, of course, the biggest story that was going on was, of course, the fact that Diddy's homes, not home, but homes, were raided by feds uh, looking into a sex trafficking probe that they've been doing against him. Not just his home in L.A., but his home in Miami as well. Looks like also New York and Chicago will have homes looked at in, in oh, conjunction, wow. yeah, not just that. So. This is why you don't have multiple homes. You gotta yeah. have just one. Technically, he doesn't own any <laughs> homes. I think it was like it, it said, like the home is owned by his bad boy company. records. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna talk about that. We've got more fallout in regards to Quiet on Set. Amanda Bynes has issued her statement in regards to this. Drake Bell has as well. And then there's an interesting topic here from Sunny Hostin. Is it Hostin or Hostin? I never know. I think it's Hostin, yeah. but maybe it's just because she's a host on Demanding the Demanding that Ariana Grande, you know, speak up about this. But not just that. Also, other Nickelodeon stars got even more horrifying stuff yes. to talk about. It's really di disturbing. So we're going to talk about that. Also, yesterday, A Thousand Marys whooped with laughter as the show Euphoria uh, supposedly on its way to being canceled. Yeah, yeah, it's just endless victories for Mary. Euphoria possibly getting canceled. It was like, I'm picturing like I was I was home and I just hear woohoo from yeah. like across the, the city. Yeah. And I realized it was actually you cheering on the dismissal of the show. Mm -hmm. HBO's finally had enough of Sam Lem Levinson's shenanigans. <laughs> So They're putting a stop to it. We're going to talk about that. We got a bunch of other stuff to get into. Again, you guys are going to have to bear with me. I'm not going to be sounding exactly 100% today, but we're going to have a lot of fun either way. So uh, before we get started, would you hit the like button on this video, please? And subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. We just passed 107 or 100 and how many thousand? It's like 107. 107, yeah. And the videos have been doing well despite our brief absence. So... Looks good. So thank you guys so much for that. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, share this video with your friends, these live streams with your friends so that more pe people can come in here, hang out and see these episodes. Also remember all Super Chats, $20 and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read them right then and there. And then we will get back on topic. Perhaps you want to wish me uh, a better day or say, I hope you're feeling better. That's, that's Something nice. Is. For yeah. once. Say something nice, for goodness sake. So, all right, Mary, if you're ready, then we could just get into it. Are you ready? Yeah, I think I'm ready. Okay, she's ready. Let's go ahead and get started then. Okay, we got some interesting news coming up from Marvel, uh, Marvel and Disney. Nelson Peltz blasts woke Disney, Kevin Feige, Black Panther, and the Marvels. Yes, all of those things. Uh, if you don't know who Nelson Peltz is, he is what is called the, what they've been referring to as the activist investor on behalf of the Trian Group that is looking to acquire board seats at Disney. And he's got a lot to say on the company itself, which I find always really, really funny because Disney opens themselves up for criticism these days because they suck so hard. I mean, I'm not a fan of Bob Iger's regime over there or anything, but this guy just does seem really annoying. I like it. That's he really, he's just poking his nose where it doesn't belong. It, it does says belong. He's an 81 year old billionaire. Get, like, wheel this guy to the Disney nursing home. No, I, li I like it. No, if, if Disney didn't suck so bad, You can bad, go to the big say... Disney boardroom in the sky. <laughs> if Disney didn't suck so bad, I would agree with you. He said, they, they say we know nothing about the movie business. We don't claim we do, but I don't think they do. With big, uh, five big losers in a row, 
They lost first place in animation. They've lost first place in features. Maybe it's time to change management in those divisions. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with those statements. Uh, with that many losers in a row, perhaps it's time to try something different. And they asked if Kevin Feige should be replaced as the head of mm. Marvel. And he said, I'm not ready to say that, but I question his record. <laughs> okay. Uh, he also <laughs> happens to be backed by Ike Perlmutter. Ike Perlmutter, of course, is a longtime Disney executive, uh, Disney Marvel executive, uh, reported to have butted heads with Feige at Marvel, so much so that reportedly Feige was ready to quit Marvel, but went above Perlmutter, which saw Iger back Feige, points out that Disney has become, quote, too woke. There's that word again. People go to watch a movie or a show to be entertained. They don't go to get a message well that's that's absolutely true he's exactly groundbreaking right. i've never heard this take before yeah but it is important to say that hearing oh, that <laughs> take from somebody worth a billion dollars is different than hearing it from somebody like us he took it further why do i have to have a marvel that's all women not that i have anything against women but why do i have to have that why can't i have marvels that are both why do i need an all black cast is he talking about black panther yes he is I mean, the story of Black Panther would lend itself to an all-black cast, but, you know, that's just me Go being off. a centrist, <laughs> I guess. Yes, marry the centrist. Yeah, I never thought I would be defending Marvel's decisions, but no, I'm, I'm, this I'm guy with is him. just... I'm with him. I, I guess when you get to be 81 years old and you're a billionaire, you have nothing to lose. No, so you can just say what be, you really think. No, the, the thing is, is when you, when you see a company that's worth this much money and you think about how much money they could be making if they were making better decisions. I used to say this about Vince McMahon all the time. Uh, CM Punk said, Vince McMahon is a millionaire who should be a billionaire because of the stupid decisions that he makes, right? So they're saying like, look, you're making all this money. Think about how much more money you could be making if you weren't making so many horrible decisions along the way. Mm -hmm. So, and as a board, as a wanting to have a seat on the board, that makes perfect sense. Uh, and uh, Nelson Peltz insists again, his fight with Disney is about the board and not Bob Iger, but it's a fine line. Uh, and also we saw that uh, George Lucas backed Disney as well in this, but of course that makes sense because he's got share in Disney stock and stuff like that. But. How would that change under a different board leadership? Well, I mean, uh, what do you mean? I mean, it's not like anyone is threatening George Lucas's money. No, no. But the, the point is, is they're seeing like where people are, are drawing the line and where people are kind of planting their flag as far as who they support in this. Right now, it's Bob Iger and the, and the mainstream Disney board and the rest is the tree and group looking to, to move on. So, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, not just that, but Henry Cavill reportedly cast in the MCU and his role will be uh, revealed later this year. Uh, that would be like the best decision his agent had made if this decision had been made a decade ago but i don't know if that's it really doesn't good. say a great thing about henry cavill's no. career right no, it, doesn't. it says that henry cavill is like down and out if he needs to get cast in the mcu at this point like he's kind of getting downgraded i mean i i just don't think he needs marvel no, but maybe Marvel needs Henry Cavill and... Well, then hopefully he took him for a lot of money. Like, we were just talking about him on Friday mm -hmm. because, you know, he's, you know, kind of seen as protecting the Warhammer franchise. Mm -hmm. um, Marvel is way too far gone to be protected anymore. Like, it's been over for Marvel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Henry Cavill can do anything to help that situation. I don't think any like one person could do that now. Maybe it's just a cameo and we're Look, getting strung along. The, the, <laughs> the long and the short of it is what they need to understand is that normies don't care anymore. And revealing all of the third or fourth tier characters, it's not going to matter. Like when superheroes became really, really popular, yes, you could make the argument that Iron Man was kind of a, uh, of a fluke because Iron Man wasn't a super popular comic book character to normies. But every normie had heard of Captain America, every normie had heard of the Hulk, every normie had heard of Spider-Man. Normal people just don't care about these third or fourth tier characters and the MCU is just down and out. It's, it's done. As, as for Spider-Man, it says Tom Holland's Peter Parker will start fading away in the MCU. Peter Parker is no more, but Spider-Man lives on since he has either lost or detached himself from everyone, everyone he's ever loved. All he has to keep him going is being Spider-Man, whether the city loves him or not. The title of Spider-Man continues to consume Peter's life little by little. 
Peter Parker will take a back seat and continue to fade from existence slowly. Well, that makes perfect sense because at the end of No Way Home, like he had basically erased his own, like himself from the existence of his friends. So all he'll have left is to be Spider Man. Mm -hmm. So that makes perfect sense. You mentioned uh, the Penguin. Oh, yeah. Getting developed by DC, on the other hand, three hundred million dollar budget, making a Disney ass mistake. <laughs> well, uh, my guess, if I had to guess, uh, and I think Matt Kadish pointed this out to me, uh, would be that when it was being made, it was COVID, so COVID restrictions and all of those COVID tests yeah. well, account no, for. Like, but uh, also like stopping and starting production up and up and over again. So yeah, that would be my guess. But three hundred million dollar budget for a limited series that you're not going to actually make any money back on because it's being released on streaming and not in a theater is insane. That's a Marvel ass decision. Did you see that, that um, here? Velma and and Knuckles are coming out on the same weekend. Yeah. I'm not. Do we have to review Velma? I suppose we have to. It was so like good for the channel to review Velma the first time. But I question I saw whether chat. that would be like as I mean, I don't know. What do you guys want? Do you want us to review the second season of Velma or is it done now? I saw <laughs> a super chat that said like I took a mental health day yesterday, which I found abhorrent. But I might actually need to take a mental health day after watching Velma season two. I saw what it did to you. You yes. were just deteriorating before us. Well, because I don't I don't enjoy hate watching. Do you want to put a poll in the chat and ask them what? They would prefer what will, what, Velma season two review or let's see what, what was the other option or kn Knuckles the, or the Knuckles. Sonic, yeah. What should uh, we review? We got a $20 from Daniel J. Corica. Feel better, Brett. <laughs> what brand blade bearings and wheels do you use? Hi, queen of whatever podcast. Um, Hello. Um, Velma. I'll I'll let Brett know that you asked, and he'll get back to you shortly. <laughs> Shane said, "Review Knuckles. If Elma can f right off." Yeah. Uh, the voice of the people. Um, but I'm just saying, like the rage baiting is always better for engagement, but not as good for yeah. our mental health. But what is your answer to the question? Okay, so um, that depends on the frames that I'm using at the time. Uh, if I'm skating wish frames, which are a rockered setup, which allows me to skate flat on different wheel sizes, meaning 65 on the outside and 58 on the inside. I skate 50-50 uh, wheels uh, on the outside. Those are the 65 millimeters. Dead wheels on the inside. I use uh, Swiss bearings. Um, Swiss ceramic bearings on all of them. I would go look at intuitionskateshop.com. Uh, it's a really, really good shop to go and look for skate parts. But I use uh, a lot of times, I, or I'll just use uh, ground control wheels, uh, stock wheels and stuff like that. But uh, send me a message online um, on Instagram or on Twitter, and I can get you more info on skate wheels and parts if you're looking for it. Okay. I prefer to do that. Uh, I can send links and stuff like that. Knuckles is winning so far, but yeah. that's only the beginning. Uh, and uh, Sonic is all in trouble now because James Marsden is involved with James Marsden, and he's involved with all of the quiet on set stuff. Yeah, James Marsden is... It's going to make the promotion well, difficult. Well, you know, when Twitter hates you last week, what, do you really have to worry about you? About your reputation? Like That's true. I don't Absolutely. know if anyone even remembers Quiet on Set anymore since the Diddy stuff came out again. Yeah, I mean, that's the... It's I, just the constant rage roller coaster. I think the job, like, the job that we do is, like, a, one of the requirements is you have to kind of get used to the idea that <laughs> people are going to... That nothing upset. matters. Nothing matters. <laughs> really, it doesn't... No, uh, like, one of the things I have really a lot though. of... Um, I don't know if respect is the right word, but I'm always shocked by these people who every time some celebrity does something stupid... And then, like, something, oh, they're all being exposed. I'm like, no, they're not. Nobody will remember this in one week. Nobody we'll, cares. We'll get into that more when we talk about the Diddy um, raids. Yeah, like, uh, you just have to learn to, I guess, because <laughs> I, I, I look at most of this now from, like, a business stand. Like, when I think, when it's really sad, but when I read the Diddy story, all I could think about was not the, the horrific nature of what happened, but how am I going to remember all this stuff? And I have to organize all my thoughts and 
uh, feelings and I have to categorize, collate, and organize all of the stuff we have to look at. So I think of it from a technical standpoint, not necessarily from like an emotional standpoint. Yeah, good so. point. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. If, did I mention this on Friday? Lego, the, the people... Uh, the, the police department that was putting Lego faces over criminals. Okay, I thought no, it was a, you so didn't. And I, I had can't this believe on the thing that this for is Friday. Real. Uh, I had this on the thing for Friday, and then by Monday, Lego had put a stop to this. So Lego forces California Police Department to stop using toy heads to mask the identities of suspects after it went viral amid new social media rules for law enforcement agencies. The, Mur uh, the Murrieta Police Department went viral with the humorous Instagram post, which substituted suspects' heads with their Lego equivalent. You can see it right there. Why would a police department need to have a social media presence anyway? They do. Why? Do. Uh, probably to get snitches to tip, <laughs> send them tips online. Is that it? Or is it just for clout? I don't know. Maybe the new social media policies should officially ban the cops from having OnlyFans. Linda was saying that there's some like sheriff or something in Florida who's got like 500,000 followers and he's that like really, definitely really seems like it should yeah. violate a precinct yeah. policy of I, some kind. Look, this made me laugh. Okay. I like it. No, it's like not not funny, <laughs> but I understand why Lego had a problem with being associated yeah. with the police, right? Says that the Murray well, and with criminals often includes humorous captions when it shares a Lego suspect mugshot, including a recent image where the officers won a game of hide and seek with a thief. Uh, fortunately for the officers, we were able to use GPS to locate the suspect, the cops added, saying the suspect with a sad bearded Lego for a head was tracked down using the victim's stolen iPhone that he had forgot to turn off. Well, that's just a boneheaded move right there. Yeah, I guess they, uh, they have to back down now. No more fun allowed. On January 1st, a new law went into effect that restricts uh, the how and when law enforcement agencies in California share suspect photos and mugshots. Well, there's nothing they like more than protecting criminals over there in California, so <laughs> that's fine. Um, but it's uh, speaking of, they were just mentioning the, the iPhone there, right? Uh, but th this one's even funnier. Did you know, I have to add this to my list, my ongoing list of things that are racist, Oh, um, yes. How exciting. Greens, green text bubbles from Android phones are, in <laughs> fact, racist. This yes. is true. Black smartphone users are more likely to use Android phones than whites. Yep. As a result, Apple's decision to use green to display texts from Android creates a social stigma for blacks, according to the Biden regime. Wait, does that mean that I'm invited to the cookout? <laughs> I guess this is in one of these huge big tech antitrust lawsuits. Yeah, the, they didn't mention the racial aspect of it in the original headline, but I guess that's what their argument was. The Justice Department called out Apple for afflicting Android smartphone users with the dreaded green bubble in text messages, calling it a mark of social stigma exclusion and blame. Oh, and, and the stats and are they're actually true. Uh, it says. Black Americans and young adults have higher than average rates of Android adoption. Smarter people is what they're saying. I get it. 26% of black cell owners say that they have an Android, which is significantly higher than the rate for whites and Latinos. I always laugh at this, too, because like mm. the, the, all the Galaxy phones now are like the S24, like the Galaxy S24, they're super expensive. Like, right. It's right. No so it's longer... not about the cost of the phone. No. It's about... You know, feeling like you're in the in crowd which of Apple dorky. users, which is dorky. I agree. I just have Apple because that's the interface that I prefer. Anytime you like go into one of these like culture wars where like you have to support a side, whether it's like uh, Pepsi or Coke, Pepsi or Coke, Android or Apple, you're a loser either way. Snapchat or Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, green bubble status has long been a sort. Look, uh, I proudly make everyone have to deal with my green bubble when i get when i join the group chat personally when, they, when i receive a text from you i <laughs> she wretches I, I actually like dry heave <laughs> by like how disgusted i am by the green bubble that appears because you're an android user and i relish it though i relish you having to dry heave 
Let them eat cake. Yeah, exactly. That's what I say. Many non-iPhone users also experience social stigma, exclusion, and blame for breaking chats where other participants own iPhones, the lawsuit claims, adding that the effect is particularly powerful for certain demographics like teenagers. Well, you know, it's uh, Because teenagers shame. are also poor. For shame. For shame. <laughs> uh, I, I just laugh at this because this has been me for years. Also, like, uh, it's like the... the you have to imagine that the original photo of Bigfoot is actually probably sent from an Android phone because of the quality. When really it it's a like compression was... error on Apple's side and not the Android fault and not the Android's fault. But uh, the original Android back in 1962. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I believe Bigfoot is blurry. All right, uh, Pearl is in the news. <laughs> I mean, uh, in the news is a stretch, but she shared a hot take a couple of days ago. At 7 a.m., she just woke up and chose violence. Yep. Pandering to women is casting Margot Robbie as the most attractive woman in a movie when we all know that you could go to your local college campus and find a more attractive version of her. At 22, Margot Robbie did films aimed at men. At 32, she did films aimed at women. So Wolf of Wall Street versus Barbie is essentially what she's referring to. Yeah. Well, then what the hell? I guess you could make the argument that like, Justice League um, or Suicide Squad were aimed at men, but the Harley Quinn movie was aimed at women, I guess. Where does it drop off? Yes. Where, where is the, the wall for which audience you appeal yeah. to? I don't know. Also, you said that you don't believe that she looks that age. You said she's looked perpetually 30. Not perpetually 30. Maybe She's just said, kind of looked vaguely, as you said, vaguely 26 for like 15 years. Yep. As is the case for most certified hotties, is they're just kind of frozen in time mm -hmm. for quite a while. And then they start to age like, you know, it's, it's not just all, it's, it kind of stops and then it's like all at once. Is what a lot of people say. What is this? What is this weird obsession they always have with? You could go to your local college campus. You could go to your local bar. You could go to your, your local, local riffs, friendlies in 1995. Yeah, in then funny. Margot Robbie and Gal Gadot would be working there. Yeah. <laughs> There's a twenty dollars super chat here from Crispy Leg Transport LLC. The only Apple product I'm still learning in my in my in, in my Mac Pro. What? Sometimes you guys send super chats and I just don't understand. I think it's understand. to make me feel like I can't read. Is it that they're yeah. trying to make us think we're illiterate? It's yeah. like a coordinated attack. But um, yeah, it's, it's this <laughs> obsession that uh, there's also a certain big uh, amount of like nostalgic idealism. Like you could go to any bowling alley back in the 90s and find a woman who looked exactly like this. But maybe I mean, you just loved life more in the 90s happier. and you were just and, happier. And it <laughs> colored your opinion of the people around you. Maybe. And I don't think that's, or, that's or not even a bad thing. For the men, you know, they were younger in the 90s, yeah. therefore attracted younger women when they were younger. What did you see the, the Pearl discourse that was going around over the weekend about like women in the wall and women were posting pictures of like themselves in their 40s to like own Pearl? And there was one. I mean, really, that's been going on for quite a while. There was this one really funny one where like Pearl says, I, I detect neck neck fat or something like that and i had no idea what she was talking about what yeah it was like some lady posted a picture of her face and she's like i see like basically I, or uh neck wrinkles like wrinkles okay. on their neck and i'm just like who has time for all this i guess i have time for this because i'm reading it but my goodness <laughs> like i do you ever just feel like when i see people arguing constantly on twitter i i wonder like i just i don't get it it doesn't make sense to me I have not voiced opinions on like most of the timeline happenings because they're a flash in the pan. And I feel like if you have to voice an opinion on everything, you definitely think you're much more important than you are. I, I can't um, think of anything that I like. I share like when it's usually if it's stuff with movies, if it's stuff with movies or box office stuff, because that's kind of like my lane. And I stay in my lane. It's good to know what your lane is and stay in it. But everything That's a virtue. else, like there's other things that I think about, but we are in the post-truth era where, you know, they post something and then 10 minutes later it's community noted and it's not true and none of it matters. And I just, I kind of wonder what is it all for? Maybe your sick day just plunged you into an existential crisis and we're going to be like lingering crisis. there. I have that existential crisis hour. anytime I'm online though. 
Okay, That's maybe it's because you were you were using your phone more during a sick day than than a work day. Maybe that's it. I don't mm. know. But about the Margot Robbie thing, one possible reason that she changed the type of movies she's in is because she now is a producer and yeah. she has a stake in the stuff. type of movies that she makes. And obviously, being a woman, she wants to make movies that women like. There's a $20 super chat here from Gordon Shumway. It says, I just saw an article from CNN saying, if you're white and have used a gift with a black person, you've just committed digital black oh, yeah. face. Our society is doomed. Well, that discourse is coming back. That was a, that was a thing a couple of years ago. I remember feeling at one point naively that that was like the, we finally reached the peak of stupidity, but my house society has proven that wrong time and time again. But that's one that they like to trot back out every so often digital blackface because you used um, I, I just did that the other day I used the I seen it meme for something Wait, I seen it that, the gif the gif yeah I seen it <laughs> I just don't like gifs yep. usually uh, I, I don't respond with gifs all that often sometimes it's a very millennial trait <laughs> it's not a Gen Z trait how does Gen Z respond Gen Z like has more it's like a psych diagnosis and I don't know like a clip of Wendy Williams or something <laughs> But is it Wendy Williams a millennial thing or a Gen X thing? I feel like like Gen Z stan Twitter just loves Wendy Williams. I mean, stan Twitter, that's the problem. Yeah, that that's, is that's kind of the root of all evil. All right. What would you like to see, cringe or cute of the day? Um, let's see cute. Okay. Oh, by the way, I so here's the thing. I had to go and... Um, there's another group using hashtag PCC pets right now. Why? Uh, because there's like a company that it's connected to. Oh, okay? great. They're going to they culturally like appropriate they're, they're, our hashtag. Uh, so this is from How Le dare they? Layla says, our spontaneous new edition peanut. Little did we know she came with little peanuts due in three weeks. Cute. So she's, she's prego right now? Prego. She looks very skinny for a pregnant cat. And then this one from Ellen Thompson uh herping is a hobby baby wiggly wait what the is that, is that a, a bear it's the snake oh i thought we were referring to the tattoo and the no and the bear whoa that's a cute, cute. snake all right all right but how do you know that the pcc pets are our pcc pets and not, not the company's pcc i look pets. for ones that tag the me or the show okay <laughs> The rest of them were from some... They're imposters. Yeah, basically. They, they are. Like, if you go... So if you go now and you type in PCC... They've ruined our secret hashtag. So, yeah. Who is this guy? Uh, what is this? this? Again, this has nothing to do with us. PCC Pets. It's still a cute dog, though. It is. That is a cute dog. PCC 2024. So it's some type of convention. For pets, I guess. I guess. I don't know. But they stole it from us. And yeah. frankly, I'm offended. Yeah, I am too. All right, let's go ahead and look at cringe of the day. This is a travel guide if you're plus size. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I can't put the tray down now. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I'm going to sit beside the smallest member of my family. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course the armrest is digging. You know you can put those up. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I have to shimmy down the aisle sideways. Somebody needs to teach her like the correct length to hold the phone away from your face no someone else is filming this well then they need to teach <laughs> that person the correct length i'm plus size and on a plane uh, of course i need a seatbelt extender love that so <laughs> wait what what are you what are you about to say there is a okay so there there is like a certain amount of humility to have to ask for a seatbelt extender every time you go on a plane. Is it humility or is it just, you know, being emboldened by how normal it is to be fat now? Yeah. You know, it's not it's not really humility. Maybe 10 it's, years ago it would have been humili humility. You would think that's like, that's the red flag that you need to like really do an intervention and like it's time to change. To be but fair, no. I like, I shimmy down the aisle that way when I'm on a plane too. <laughs> I'm not fat. Why? It's kind of weird. I guess if you have a bag, you don't want it to hit people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> we do need more space on our plane seats, though. Mm -hmm. So if it takes obesity activists to accomplish it, I'm okay with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Just dancing through the pain and the existential dread. <laughs> I can right. see it on your face. <laughs> 
Let's go ahead. No, we're 30 minutes into the show. I think we should just go ahead and get started because this was a very big story yesterday, was it not? I just want to wait for the rest of the money to fly <laughs> before, before we... Well, you know, there's something weird about, like, money flying everywhere while talking about Diddy's sexual harassment it, lawsuit. It, I just was <laughs> keeping an eye on it, okay? Anyway... <laughs> Guys, this was huge news. We've already reported on the 73-page lawsuit that was filed against Diddy by Rodney Jones in February, but it's followed up by a huge FBI raid on Diddy's homes in both L.A. and Miami. There were at least three people detained by law enforcement. Two of them were his sons. It seems like he left his sons high and dry because the rumor has it Diddy is on the run from the cops. Bro just got up and left. He's out. Bro like, just got up and left. It's weird. So he He's like, was Yo, Justin, gone. Justin, man it, the fort. <laughs> I got to go. Yeah, his sons, Justin and King, 25 years old and 29 years old, were both on site at his Miami home. They were both seen in handcuffs. The, the All of the media outlets were in helicopters filming the whole thing from above. It was crazy I happening live. I saw yesterday that hashtag P. Diddler was already trending on. Yep, on it was. It was. Uh, there's a $20 one here from uh, Corey Anderson. Uh, Mary, you're like five feet. How much more room do you need on a plane? I mean, it could always help. Definitely. I think everyone wishes there were more room on the plane. Not me as much as other people, though. Um, but yeah, let's uh, take a look at that video, I guess, uh, from TMZ. The, uh... This is actually the Department and of Homeland Security. Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information. Those people have been detained. Bro, that's an unhinged amount of garbage cans. Oh, they can't see it, but that's an unhinged amount of garbage cans on the side of the road. Now we're trying to still connect. Look at that. There's a lot of trash, okay? Of trash. Like the dots, we do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. On the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home yeah. in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily on. Never own anything in your name. Yeah, it's weird, right? So what this looks like is P. Diddy got a call. He got a warning that these raids were happening on his residences. And he had time to hightail it out of there and leave his sons high and dry to get arrested mm -hmm. by Homeland Security agents. Uh, they they so, released a statement. They said earlier yeah. today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, that's Homeland Security Investigations, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. And guess what? Further information has not been provided. Funny how that <laughs> so works. we don't actually know right now if Diddy is in custody or not. Is he actually escaped to some remote island or is he getting questioned by the cops? Basically, it, his private jet uh, owned under his name left the U.S. Went that morning from Miami uh, or sorry, from L.A., so this says private jet owned by P. Diddy left the U.S. Combs residences were raided by DHS in connection with a sex trafficking investigation. The flight path of the plane appears to be headed towards Cape Verde. Cape Verde has no extradition treaty with the U.S., but then they got community noted. And it says that his aircraft actually landed in Antigua yeah. on March 25th. And at this time, it does not appear to be proceeding to Cape Verde. So there was actually a photo of the plane that Don Lucra posted. Uh, I guess his name 
for the private jet is Love Air, and it's grounded in Antigua. And his travel is now restricted in the Caribbean island. But this is the confusing part. Apparently, Diddy wasn't on his private jet when it was making its escape route to Antigua. We have this video of him. Yeah, TMZ filmed Diddy uh, at the Miami airport. Here he is. He's just pacing around the airport, looking directionless. What next, Diddy? And, then... and this is at the same time that the raids are going on. Like they didn't think to put an arrest warrant out on him, the, the, or one of the most suspicious things I saw was uh, the fact that you know he they did all this without knowing his exact whereabouts, which I don't buy for a second. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that he might have gotten a warning from the feds directly. Correct. So Ian Carroll, the independent journalist who's been talking about the Diddy lawsuit, about Michael Jackson, a lot of different things. He posted TMZ filmed Diddy at the Miami airport yesterday. He can't have been on his private jet that apparently flew from L.A. to Antigua and Barbados today after he was raided. So my guess is they flew a bunch of videos, evidence, and maybe assets to safety outside of the U.S. And Diddy is still on the run, but I'm guessing they find him by the time we wake up in the morning, that is today. The most important thing to remember here, though, is Diddy was not the top of the chain. He was just the face of the operation. They're likely to try to pin this all on him and save the more important people above him. Our job is not to let them. So Candace Owens echoed this sentiment, saying the feds are currently raiding Diddy's house. They already knew what he was up to, but he's going to be the fall guy so that they can protect the people at the top of the ring. They're raiding his home to hide evidence, not to find it. That's how this works. So I'm sure that everyone here agrees that Obviously, the um, the purpose of three letter agencies is not to look out for the best interests of the American people. And this is the most high profile trafficking case since Epstein. He's a fall guy. And we know that Epstein was also a fall guy. And Epstein had his own fall guy, which was Ghislaine Maxwell. Wouldn't be surprised if, the, if they were flying evidence out of the country on that plane. Were they flying, flying evidence flying, outside uh, of U.S. jurisdiction? You know, probably a bunch of blackmail tapes on famous people that they've got for over the years. Are you joking or do you think it's a possibility? Possibility. You know? I think it's definitely yeah. a possibility. And, um, you know, maybe the feds are in on it because... As we know from details of the Rodney Jones lawsuit, Diddy actually had connections with corrupt cops. Yeah. He had a cleanup guy who could convince cops to let off all Diddy and all of his friends for suspicious activity. Yep. So we already know that they might be implicated as well. and They have an interest in conducting a fake investigation into Diddy and you know, his homes, which were reportedly just littered with secret cam cameras maybe, and you know, secret went, audio recordings. The feds went in there and destroyed drugs. all the evidence that were in there. Yes, drugs, yeah. unregistered firearms, everything. They might have been hiding or destroying evidence. Yeah. There's a high probability that that's the case. I just thought um, it was interesting that they didn't suppose they supposedly didn't know his whereabouts when this happened. I don't buy that for a second. I think they knew exactly where he was. Yeah. Also, people were pointing out this perfectly mirrors scenes from his old music videos. Yeah. One in the hypnotized music video. It brought both of these brought me back to my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. So he's on the yacht and there are helicopters full of federal agents following him in that music video. And then um, what was the other one? Uh, oh, um. It was with Biggie. Yeah, and Mace, I, I forget. Yeah, there was another music video from the 90s where they were getting onto a private jet and there were four black Mercedes full of feds coming after them and they had to escape. Mm -hmm. So predictive programming, it's a thing. Uh, I'll, I'll use, also, it's fair to point out that on March 25th, 1997 is when Notorious B.I.G. released the incredible album, Life After Death, which I still have. 
Um, yes. Weird timing. Yep. Uh, Weird March 18, timing. 1997. Also, 30 years to the day. Apparently, Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy was filed on the same day as Kim Porter's death anniversary. That's that's kind of weird. Yep. Just a lot of weird connections being made. One of them, people are talking about Diddy's connection with Prince Harry in relation to this lawsuit. So. Diddy was allegedly using access to Prince Harry, quote, as a means to obtain sexual favors. That might be a bit of a stretch, but here is the actual quote from the lawsuit. This says affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry. Yeah. And I looked this up. There is actually photo evidence of Prince Harry palling around with he yes. did he and and uh kanye. and kanye there is this photo of them it's prince william prince harry kanye and p diddy hanging out at an after party in july 2007 in london after a concert for diana a concert that these rappers i guess dedicated to their late mother princess diana i love the idea I, i'm sorry but there's just something funny about rappers rapping for princess die i mean i don't i don't know all the details but that's just it looks like um kanye is like wearing those those glasses that they were very have popular the slits in time. them what are those called i, I uh or stunner shades <laughs> he was wearing yeah. these like white uh i guess stunner shades and having like harry try them on or whatever yeah but they were all seen hanging out at, I mean, forgive, at a party forgive back my, then. Um, forgive my um, black pilled nature on stuff like this, but uh, we're never going to see the names printed on the on the Epstein client list, and we're never we're not going to see justice for any of those people. If you want to know how the media works over time to craft even the narrative around a situation like this, when I went to look for photos today for the thumbnails, right? Um, the first picture that comes up when I, when I Googled Diddy was a picture of him and Donald Trump from like 1997. But we, as, uh, as we all know, he was actually a, a Democrat and did stuff with Hillary and, and campaign for Hillary and stuff like that. You mean so, Diddy was? Yes. Well, so, Trump also was a Democrat, right? But I'm, but I'm so. saying that, but that's not the picture that comes up. It's, it doesn't, it's not Hillary and, and Diddy that's coming up when you search Diddy's name right now. It's Diddy and, and Trump from decades Decades before the stuff with Hillary. Right. And it's we're supposed to believe that E. Jean Carroll is a credible mm -hmm. accuser. It's just, uh, yeah, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. And a lot of people are talking about the Diddy lawsuit in the context of some kind of great awakening that there was ushered great, in oh, by there Cat will Williams. There never be a great awakening. It's not a real thing. I it's mean, everyone is the saying... Internet. The internet gets a select group of people. You might be able to wake more than the average amount of people up to corruption or bad behavior on behalf of, uh, you know, on the behalf of celebrities. But that does not mean that the world comes to terms with things like that. That's just not how things work. No, I agree. That's not how things work. Cause look at Quiet on Set. Everyone forgot about it. But everyone is yeah. saying everyone is saying that Cat Williams was the whistleblower for the exposure of the entire rap industry. There's a twenty dollar note one from Crispy Like Transport LLC. Uh, he said nobody knew who Kanye was in '97. I said 2007, not '97. Yeah, 2007. That was that was uh, well after Kanye was relevant. Well, it's even funnier that they're doing like a concert for Princess Diana, and like I guess it was like a 10 year anniversary or something like that. Must have been because they look yeah. to be like late teens or early 20s in those photos the the princes do i guess it's just it's different because when we when we look at this stuff all day it's like you see a whole bunch of stuff happen but nothing ever changes um again you're never gonna find you're never gonna see those people that uh that were on epstein's client list come to uh, come to bear they're not gonna be brought to justice nothing's gonna change that's just my take on these things i say don't hold don't like Hold your well-being and your in your in your hopes on the idea that a bunch of evil people get their comeuppance because that's not usually how it works. I think the question that remains is: Was P Diddy a Jeffrey Epstein figure in this, or was he someone's Ooh. Ghislaine Maxwell? I like I like Deer Scream. He says I prefer a great noticing. Yes, okay, I, I prefer if more people just notice. I disagree. Once in a while. I disagree. I don't think that 
outside of the intensely internet sphere, people are paying attention no, to they're this. Not. Really, they're, I mean. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like every, I think it's I. T I tell you this all the time. I said most people are victims of. We're all victims of being in our own echo chambers of sorts, created by algorithms on our phones and on our computers. And you could say that we could say this like, oh, everyone's waking up. Cat Williams woke everyone up, except for I'm like, yeah, except for the nine gazillion people who didn't watch that interview and don't have any clue that this stuff is going on. Rhaegar Targaryen sent twenty dollars, dude. I gotta ask, did Diddy do it? Did Diddy, did, Diddy, Diddy do didn't do it? Did he dip to Denny's before he was dunked as the Diddy Diddler, or did he didn't? Diddy, 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 did he also remember vote or die? Yeah, that's what he's. He, so in this picture with Hillary, he's wearing a vote or die shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. One out of 10 normies have heard of Jeffrey Epstein didn't K himself, and they think it's a meme. <laughs> so I don't think that this is part of some great awakening necessarily. But think about it, um, about the implications this could have for the rap industry. It could be actually a big deal because, you know, if Diddy gets taken down from his position of power, a lot of the people that he is silencing or a lot of people that he has on a leash right now are going to be relatively free for once, yeah. and maybe they can talk about their experiences. We have another $20 from Dat Pie over there. First, I was 80% convinced, then 100%. Now I'm a million percent convinced that Cody Rhodes is a black man, especially after privileged billionaire board member The Rock beat him bloody last night while calling him boy. Uh, I heard about that. I, what? I yeah, I, I haven't watched it, but yeah. It's uh, going to be interesting to see how WrestleMania plays out this year, guys. Uh, look, the... All Tupac stuff. is coming out of witness protection. Let's go. Oh, no, oh, that, no, would, no, that no. would be the white pill this story deserves. Uh, would be Tupac coming out of witness... It'd be Tupac and Biggie coming out of witness protection. I don't know. I, I think um, and it's... Biggie's lost a bunch of weight. It's interesting that the Diddy lawsuit name dropped Prince Harry because I mean is he gonna be fighting that we already know that Prince Andrew was buddies with Epstein yep. and the royal family has a lot of skeletons in their closet to hide Nothing ever. Like, like, like whatever can, what, what was the real big like benefit to the Eps to the Gillian Maxwell trial like what really came of that other than her going other than her being in prison now yeah I'm not sure <laughs> I mean they're still like selectively doling out details to the my, public. My point with all of this stuff is it's not supposed to be a black pill in the, in the sense that I think that these people won't get brought to justice, even though I don't think that they will. My point is, is to find joy in other aspects of your life and don't rely on, you know, the, the hopeful um, trials of billionaires and millionaires and, you know, hope, you know, people that are bad getting their, uh, you know, getting their comeuppance. Like, don't put your hopes on that. By the way, I wanted to remind you guys of that video we showed you of Diddy and Justin Bieber. When Justin was 14 years old, Diddy was talking about having a 48-hour sleepover with Justin Bieber. And who is to know whether that involved a freak-off? And what kind of stuff was Justin Bieber getting exposed to at such a young age I mean, in Usher says Diddy's the same care? Thing. Usher was saying the same thing. Yeah. And, and let's, let's show them the Diddy Usher was video. Usher's mentor. Okay. Let's so think back video. to that. Here's a video of Usher when he was on with Howard Stern. Moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some... Camp? If anybody tries to send you to something called Puffy Flavor Camp, just say no. More importantly, if anyone tries to send your kid to something called Puffy Flavor Camp... Just say no. Just say no. Yeah, yeah that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop. Right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. Why I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. Didn't. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh -huh. and I didn't, Thank you. Uh -huh. 
Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All you know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, okay, <laughs> on a real note, what self-respecting adult would party until 4 a.m. with a child? Mm-hmm. Seriously, like think about the moral character of an adult who would be partying, binge drinking, drinking, and orgying even in the same building as a child. It's fair to point out. Suge Knight says, P- uh, "People, the raids today wasn't for Diddy. It was to destroy the incriminating stuff on powerful men." Hashtag Epstein. Hashtag Diddy. Hashtag Clive Davis. Yeah. Um, Oh, but I, I how he's tweeting from prison. I, I want to finish my thought about Justin Bieber because, um, as you can see, Diddy has a pattern of behavior of taking a young artist under his wing and exposing them to a bunch of inappropriate behavior and a bunch of drinking, drugs, sexual activity, maybe even having them participate in it. Mm-hmm. And that's just an allegation, obviously. But think about the pattern of behavior. So he has this 48-hour sleepover with Justin Bieber, whatever the hell that means. And I see this video from Stephen Baldwin, who is Haley Bieber's father, Justin Bieber's father-in-law. He posted a video on Instagram yesterday calling out the demonic tough guys in Hollywood. So let's take a look at that. This is a comment about some of the comments, which I rarely comment, but since some folks have chosen to be obviously demonic, therefore it's not their fault. So I'm here just to share a beautiful message of hope, unconditional love, and peace to all of the haters out there. God bless you. Pray for your enemies. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Even the plane doesn't want you talking. He looks evil too. (laughs) A little bit. And remember, when I see you on the street, if you slap me in the face, I will turn the other cheek. But if I feel that second cheek stinging, you better run. Unclear who that was aimed at, but still interesting to keep a tab on that guy because he's been making cryptic videos like that. Now, if you said, if I see you on the streets, I'll call my brother and he'll (laughs) shoot you. And we'll take you to church at Hillsong and bring you to hear the gospel. Okay, let's read Super Chats. Andrew Jacobs said Drea DeMatteo starred in The Sopranos and Sons of Anarchy and has a net worth of $4 million. She's not struggling and doesn't need to do OF. Look, the first of all, don't listen to any website that tells you it knows the net worth of a celebrity. But, but she is probably doing pretty well for herself just off of that. On her uh, resume. Gonna, we'll talk more about the Drea we'll, we'll get into it. stuff yeah. tomorrow. It was funny. Shane H. Wilder said, happy Taco Tuesday, Brett and Mary. Brett, I hope you're feeling better, buddy. Mary, no beating him today. Let's give him a chance to recover. LOL. Yeah, he'll he'll have a brief pause on the beatings just for today. It. Dave Collins said, I wish the feds would respond to the human trafficking and sex crimes at the border with as much enthusiasm as they did during their raid on Diddy. That would be nice. Well, we don't even know if they were collecting evidence instead of destroying it. Let's do one more. DCNC said, welcome back from your mental health day, Bretts. I don't take mental health days. That's fake news, obviously. All right, let's hold off on ours. Let's okay. go ahead and talk about Nickelodeon because there's just uh, there's just an insane amount of stuff still coming out about Quiet on Set. Yeah, we're still reeling from all of the revelations that were in the Quiet on Set documentary. And afterwards, everyone was wondering what Amanda Bynes had to do with it. Was she asked for an interview? And if she was, why did she decline? Why is she staying silent? Yep. So it turns out that Amanda Bynes was asked for an interview and she declined. 
she declined to do an interview because her experience at Nickelodeon was all sunshine and roses and cupcakes and rainbows, apparently. Is that what we're in those locked That's offices? That's what we're supposed to believe. It was rainbows, cupcakes yeah. in, the, in those locked rooms with Dan Schneider? We're supposed to believe that everything about Amanda Bynes' experience at Nickelodeon was just perfect. Nothing untoward happened whatsoever. That's the official story, and that's the narrative that Amanda Bynes even is going to tell us. So here is TMZ's report from an inside source about Amanda Bynes. She turned down a quiet on-set interview. Amanda Bynes isn't interested in talking about her child star past, especially for the documentary about Nickelodeon, because she simply didn't have a bad experience, TMZ has learned. Sources with direct knowledge tell TMZ that both Amanda and her parents, Rick and Lynn, were approached about telling their stories on Quiet on Set, but were told they all opted not they all opted not to participate. Mm. Our sources say Amanda, whom we're told did not even watch the documentary, declined to sit for an interview on account that she felt she just didn't have anything to share that would further their cause. In other words, she didn't go through what the quiet on set subjects went through. On the contrary, our sources tell us, Amanda is grateful for what she was able to do with her Nickelodeon start. As we're told, she acknowledges it launched her career back then. As for her parents, our sources say that they're private people and wanted to stay out of the spotlight for this. Unlike Amanda, we're told they actually watched the documentary and were both saddened and disgusted by the allegations. But again, we're told that their family as a whole didn't experience what these other child actors did at the network, which is why it didn't make sense for them to sit for it. Very bizarre, because as we can see, Amanda Bynes whole mental breakdown spiral that she's been going down for years now is a testament of what happened to her at Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that people struggle with mental health and it doesn't mean that they were abused necessarily. But if you just take a look at what happened between her and Dan Schneider on the surface level, there is no reason that you should be that physically close with an adult who is your boss as a child. And there's no reason that you should basically consider them a second father when you fall out with your own parents. Mm. Super inappropriate how close they were. Um, so just that on its own. And then we also saw footage of her giving Dan Schneider massages on his neck and shoulders in the documentary. Mm -hmm. So that's just what we were allowed to see. We were also told that Dan Schneider and Amanda Bynes, during the kids, the kid actors' school hours, they would go back to his office for a long period of time, and they would just be theoretically talking about scripts, uh, talking about jokes, and writing jokes together. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, I'm just not a fool. I'm not fooled by that. I don't buy that. <laughs> I, I just think like given the way that Amanda Bynes has turned out as a young adult we can very clearly see that she had bad experiences as a child star I don't know what incentive they have to keep quiet about that maybe they are subject to an NDA or some kind of penalty if they speak out I but mean, ndas don't cover criminal activity and if she was underage that's criminal activity so no. maybe there was inappropriate stuff going on that wasn't criminal activity that's that's what we don't know so this definitely conflicts with the rumor that amanda Bynes has been secretly speaking out for herself for years now circa 2017 and 2018 during the time when Amanda Bynes was still under conservatorship with her parents, she allegedly she allegedly ran this account under the name Ashley Banks. And under that fake name, she talked about her negative experiences as a child star. And here is this resurfaced letter that she allegedly wrote about Dan Schneider, but then deleted. She said, thank you for all of your ongoing support. I don't know how any of these men sleep at night, but if there's one thing I do know, 
It's that what's done in the dark always comes to light. Sorry, I thought it was clever. Unfortunately, I will obviously not be making any comment whatsoever, for obvious reasons. And unfortunately, I feel as though the only way that legitimate stories can make the headlines regarding blank is if others publicly speak on his behavior. Blank was truly like a second father to me, but things changed. After the second incident, I don't know if I will ever be able to have children or have the family of my dreams. I mean, what's what's the incentive for her to not speak on these things now? Well, it's not necessarily an incentive to stay silent. It's a threat to speak out, right? It's a threat if you speak out, Okay. right? It's not necessarily that she gains anything from staying silent. It's that she loses something if she speaks or... Here's, uh, you know, a pretty easy explanation to come to. She doesn't want to revisit trauma, like especially not in a public format where everyone on the Internet is going to be discussing something that was private to you only or private to you and your family okay. pre previously. So I found some further screenshots from this fake account, um, Ashley Banks. There were personal photos posted on this account of Amanda, including a photo of her alleged driver's license. Here are some claims that were tweeted from that account. That her parents and lawyer ran her verified Twitter account. We know for a fact that Britney Spears and other celebrities have no control over their social media. She had no control of her money and millions were stolen from her, nor was she allowed to freely travel. We know for a fact now this also happened to Britney. She claims that her Hairspray co-star, John Travolta, is a, quote, sexual monster, something I can confirm since I've done stories on him and talked to sources who had valid claims Travolta essayed them and or made predatory advances on them. I believe Amanda suffered abuse similar to what Brittany fell victim to, as I exposed in my documentary. This is Liz Crokin, if you want to look into her. Um, she has a website that you can look into all of her work. But anyway, um, they show screenshots from this account, Ashley Banks. She said, the jig is up. They used me and my talent only to have me committed and steal millions. Have you ever had to beg for your own money, make millions since the ripe age of seven, like a show dog, only for the state to steal your bones? Um, here's another one. She said, he always, uh, this is talking about John Travolta. He always had men in his trailer. I walked in on him and another male masseuse and was nearly fired. He's sick. Um, it bothers me that John Travolta is not being treated as Bill Cosby is. John Travolta is a pervert. I know this. There was a lot on that account. And this, the photo of her driver's license is the most shocking part. Mm. Posted 15th of February, 2017. She said, it's me, authentic, often imitated, but never duplicated. I refuse to be silenced. My friends know how to reach me. So I don't know what explanation you can give. I mean, I guess someone could theoretically print out a fake ID with Amanda Bynes on the picture but it looks pretty credible to me and amanda Bynes is kooky enough to make an account called ashley banks and think that no one will pick up on the fact that it's hers <laughs> so that's just for your own investigation if you want to pick up where i left off later anyway here's drake bell's reaction to nickelodeon's disclaimer on quiet on set they said we put safeguards in place <laughs> to make sure that none of this ever happens again. Here's what he said. I find their response pretty empty because they still show our shows. They still put our shows on and I have to pay for my own therapy. I have to figure out what, I mean, if there was anything, if there was any truth behind them actually caring, there would be something more than quotes on a page by obviously a legal representative telling them exactly how to tailor a response. Yeah. So when I saw that, <laughs> that statement, we put safeguards in place. I'm like, what were the safeguards? Yeah. <laughs> like, explain what you did. Explain how you changed the way that your network operates. Yeah. 
because as you can see from the stories we're about to cover later on um years later nothing changed also ariana grande is getting some hate right now because a lot of people feel she as one of the former nickelodeon coast co-stars who became probably the most well-known and famous uh, and wealthy of, I think, any of them. I think she's got to be the, the breakout star yeah. of Nickelodeon. Um, they've noticed that she stayed silent, and they feel like Ariana Grande has a bit of an obligation to make some kind of comment about her interactions with Dan Schneider. She doesn't. This says, The View's Sunny Hostin calls out Ariana Grande for not speaking out on Nickelodeon allegations following Quiet on Set. The co-hosts, however, disagreed, saying that Ariana Grande was a kid who may not have known about what was going on, or she publicly runs the risk of looking like grandstanding, like making the story about herself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not, it's, it wouldn't be fair if, if she was to speak out. And then people said that, but it is a very reasonable explanation as to what people would say, even if it's not fair to her. Mm -hmm. You know, by saying that you're taking the attention off of what's important and putting it on yourself. That's just not something she can help because of the level of her celebrity. I guess that no matter what you do, if you stay silent or you make a statement. You're going to piss somebody off. You're going to piss somebody off. Well, if your statement I, is too curated, saying. it doesn't seem organic enough. You don't seem authentic enough. And then, you know you don't speak quickly enough. I mean, you didn't make a statement quickly enough. That's literally enough. what we're saying about the Drake Bell stuff, though. We're saying about that Josh Peck. We're, no, we're saying that, that Nickelodeon's response wasn't the proper response because any oh, response... Oh, that's not comparable at all. That is not comparable but I'm at saying all. That Nickelodeon is a company. In all of, They're in all not of these, a person. In all of these respects, it's all... Yeah, but even a, even a person is going to have their statement written up by a, by a publicist. I mean, they don't have to. Yeah. They, they certainly will, don't though. have to. Most but I'm will. saying... You're speaking for yourself as an individual. Yeah. You're not speaking for a corporation. A corporation being accused of criminal activity has the what obligation have, um, what to would respond. The, what would the right response have been? Like from for, Nickelodeon or for, from Ariana would it, Grande? Would it have been from Nickelodeon. Would it have been to release like a, a a bullet point of like all the things they've changed? I mean, I it's difficult to say because if they did anything that they're criminally yeah. liable for, they literally can't admit to doing yeah. it or else they will be ruined. Yeah. So literally there's just no way to respond to it in a way that's actually truthful. You know, if they wanted to tell the truth um, and basically hit the self-destruct button, I guess that would be the morally right thing to do, but no corporation is ever gonna do that. Nope. <laughs> so it's kind of irrelevant to even, you know, wonder what they should have said. But anyway, I don't think Ariana Grande owes anyone an explanation. I don't think she has to speak out about anything. If she wants to stay quiet about this, that's her right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult to say because you also see that she benefited so much from what Nickelodeon did for her career. Mm -hmm. So some people would feel, you know, if there was some kind of. Are these kids still getting glaring? He, uh, so both Drake Bell and like uh, was saying that like they're still playing their shows. Are they getting royalties from these shows? I assume so. Yeah. I mean, most of the views are on streaming though, so that's changed significantly since since those shows were initially aired. But anyway, I wanted to get into some news stories related to the documentary. There are more former Nickelodeon child stars who are speaking out as a result of the Quiet on Set documentary. Obviously, that had a limited scope. They couldn't possibly ask every single former Nickelodeon star for their experience and for their interview because at some point you've got to close the boundaries on it. But what's interesting is that these are Nickelodeon stars from after the Nickelodeon golden era. Um, even stars who weren't on Dan Schneider productions who didn't interact with Dan Schneider. So it suggests that this is more of an, it's more of a, an institutional problem with Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider isn't to blame for the entirety of the inappropriate conduct. Yeah. Um, firstly, Amber Frank played a character on Nickelodeon's Haunted Hathaways. Seriously, this is from over 10 years ago, and I had never heard of this show before. But she posted on TikTok about a horrifying situation she witnessed while working at Nickelodeon. 
She said uh, Nickelodeon sent computers over to production when we were starting filming the show. And when they were turned on, there was CP on them. Nobody was held accountable. There was no investigation. It's beyond heartbreaking to know that a company that was employing children failed miserably at protecting them. So who is to say if maybe this CP was actually depicting current employees, child employees of Nickelodeon, actually? Like, that's a huge, glaring question. Um, I don't know if they're at all going to respond to what she said, but let's take a look at her video. This one? Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. In my experience. Also, while we're on this topic, I would like to add that one of the horrifying things that happened in my experience with Nickelodeon was when Nickelodeon sent computers over to production when we were starting filming the show. And when they were turned on, there was child porn on them. And nobody was held accountable. There was no investigation, never even found out where it came from or who was responsible for it. It's beyond heartbreaking to know that a company that was employing children failed miserably at protecting them. So I am sending a lot of love to all of the victims involved and I hope that we can create a very different environment moving forward for child actors and that's actually not all (laughs) because another nickelodeon star named ali demeco talked about how she as a 14 year old actress on nickelodeon was forced to kiss a 30 year old man So this says, uh, Ali D'Amico said she had to kiss an actor who was 30 years old multiple times when she was 14. Let's take a look. It was a scripted show and a lot of people thought it was, a lot of kids thought that it was a documentary in real life. And people, particularly girls, wanted to fight me in real life. Like I didn't have fans because they thought it was real life and that I kissed this greasy ass, dusty ass dwarf. I'm sorry to this man, but I did not want to kiss him. Also, guys, I'm 4'11". He's a 30-year-old man. Do you, just, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't even watch it. It gave me fucking the ick. I couldn't, and I, it honestly gives me PTSD. I'm watching this um, Quiet On Set documentary, and it's talking about how integral and vital it is to create, especially when it's like a kid's cast, to create an environment where kids feel comfortable to say no, or I don't feel comfortable with this. And then I'm like, yeah, maybe they do express that, though. It's also more important to create an environment that listens to the kids and actually does not make them do things when they don't want to do them because they made me kiss this 30 plus year old man when i was like what 14 15 um i told them many times i didn't want to do it my mom was very against it and they just pretty much made me feel like i was gonna lose my job and like be fired um Yeah, and actually that's not the first time that she had spoken about that experience, actually. Like, back in November last year, she also made a video about this, saying that it was actually a female producer who is the one that forced her to do this scene after both her and her mom complained to production about Mm. it. I would say shame on your mom, first and foremost, because she had a problem with you doing this scene but went along with it anyway as to not cause a stir yep. and to continue getting paychecks from, you know, your kid's job. Yep. Uh, it's messed up on all accounts for every adult involved in that situation. And I also saw um, Alexa Nicholas from Zoe 101. She has a podcast where she talks about a lot of these experiences with Nickelodeon stars. $20 Super Chat here from Pat the Plumber says, uh, yay, Brett's alive. Makes heart with hands. Yes. This one or um, this one? The first one. This one only? Okay. Um, Alexa Nicholas showed a clip of Victoria Justice having to do the exact same thing. 
she was, I guess, 14-year-old actress. And this actor here, who is her love He's interest in the show, that's an adult. 20 years old? I believe she was 13. No, she was not. Has someone no. you didn't like? Of course. of course I have. I didn't like you. But who loves me now? Me. Oh. <laughs> Ew! Stop. Yo! Hey, come on! Yeah. What the f*** is going on my mind? See, this didn't happen when I was there. So this was the season after you. Girls. Special girl. Ew! <laughs> Guys! The casting director for Zoe 101 knew the age difference and no one went, yo, you know, crime. Isn't this an, an A of a, of a minor? Yeah, is that actually legal? Like, is there some kind of legal loophole that allows that because it's stage acting? Or is that just like totally illegal on the part of Nickelodeon? I have no idea. I have, that's, uh, I've, I've seen that acted before. It seems like that's definitely yeah. Yeah. happened before on plenty of different shows. So Not just a, on Nickelodeon, but plenty so of different. there was a six-year age difference or seven-year age difference between her and that guy who's 20 and 13. Yeah. 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 Like, if, if, if your mom wouldn't be okay with it in real life, why is she okay with it? Because there are cameras filming the it the whole probably, time. I mean, would the mom have been okay with it in real life? She probably would. <laughs> Jeez, it's just so dark. Like, thinking about how, like, a lot of these parents just do not give an By F. the way, this is why um, they, this is why they hire older actors to play younger kids in movies and television to avoid stuff like this. Yeah, that's this true. Is why, this is why when... That's true, um, but, you know, like, I don't know, find, find another kid actor if you're that intent on it being that scene, I guess. Corey Anderson says, uh, okay, I think we can all agree we need Mary's dictatorship now. We do. It's high time. Um... I also came across yet another story about Nickelodeon, this one in regard to Brian Peck, the one who was convicted of sex crimes against Drake Bell. So this says, Michael Bauer from Nickelodeon Salute Your Shorts speaks out on his experience from a Nickelodeon executive in the 90s who invited him to a hotel and Brian Peck wanting him to be naked in a film and trying to watch him undress as a teen. So I guess Brian Peck already had a pattern of behavior before Drake Bell showed up. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and I I just cannot believe that someone this blatantly dangerous can get away with it for so long on the excuse that if you criticize me, you're homophobic. Back I mean, in the 90s? That, that shocks you. In I the mean, 90s, that, that though? Excuse, that excuse would work today. I know it would work today, but in the 90s, seriously, it was the 90s. How, yeah, um, but, but how 90s was that? In ho 90s in Hollywood is different from 90s. Uh, 90s in Hollywood is different from 90s the rest of the country over. They must be living in the 2050s in Hollywood right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Michael Bauer also recalled that he auditioned for this film at Brian Peck's house. Uh, so and he did, Aaron, in fact, didn't... see the John Wayne Gacy por self portrait Isn't that when he was Aaron at the house. Taylor Johnson, um... Same, same thing. I mean, at least Aaron Taylor Johnson was eighteen, but mm. Michael Bauer was yeah, not. Yeah, maybe, maybe a good first step for Hollywood would be to stop the whole uh, auditioning at people's houses thing. Why is this a thing? <laughs> Why is this a thing? Uh, maybe that one would be a good idea. Okay. Uh, anyway, let's get into super let's chats. Go. Bucky Ducky said, "Happy Monday, Brett. I hope you're feeling better." Uh, not when he's being gaslit. He doesn't. Exactly. Shane H. Wilder said, Brett, get some Fisherman's Friend. That'll clear you up in a couple of hours. They taste like crap, but they work. Uh, I mean, what my, is that? My, I have no idea, but my sinuses are fine. My sin It's not my sinuses. I just had a really, really bad sore throat, and uh, my body just felt like shit yesterday. Corey Anderson said, I'm not reading that. Do he also more. said, I made the mistake of going into Mary's Instagram comment section. I'm sorry for what you have to deal with, Mary. What, uh, is he speaking about something in particular? I don't know because I'm not reading the comments. Yeah. So you're the one who has to deal with it. Yeah. I don't have to deal with it. Do one more. Shane H. Wilder said, review Knuckles. Velma can F right off. 
Yes, well, my, well how's the, where's the poll at right now? 73% are saying review Knuckles. Here's the thing. You guys are going to say Knuckles because that's what you want to want. But what you really want is the Velma review. It is. I mean, let, let's face it. <laughs> bad true. news, bad news and hate uh, in, in hate, <laughs> hate goes farther. Hate destruction. Goes farther than <laughs> stuff people like. Yeah, it's ba true. Guess what gets more views? Uh, movie Black reviews, pills. Movie reviews that you like or movie reviews that you hate. I can give you the answer to that. It's movie reviews that you hate. Black pills are definitely in higher demand than white pills these days. High Vulture 75 said, all that sugary cereal destroyed your health, Brett. Mary tried to warn you. No, it didn't. Fuck off. <laughs> okay, you looked at me when you said that. That was like, whoa. That was personal. Do one more. Corey Anderson said, sweet, I'm black. Okay, then. Well, um, right. Congrats, I guess. Well, let's hold off on the rest. It's time to, uh, for Mary to celebrate because it looks like Euphoria is being canceled. It is time to celebrate. We got some great news. It looks like the show on HBO, Euphoria, might be canceled permanently. Now, that's just the rumor, but here's what we're going off of. Filming season three for Euphoria has been indefinitely delayed. Mm -hmm. And that could possibly mean the show is just done for, for good. Because basically, the stars of Euphoria don't need Euphoria anymore. Yeah, as you say, it's probably they just can't afford Sweeney and Zendaya they can't, anymore. I mean, they can't afford these stars. These stars are too busy and booked to be doing this show anymore. Sam Levinson is in the doghouse with HBO right now because he messed up so badly on The Idol. Everyone hated the yep. idol and it was just rife with scandals and problems. So he's already in a bad position with HBO and has less power there than he had before the idol. Mm -hmm. um, so it turns out that for the rest of the year, at the very least, all of the cast members have been given permission to pursue other roles. Here's another thing. All of the cast members are looking less and less like high schoolers by the day. So you're going to have to change the entire timeline of the show to make it make sense. Well, that's what they said on Discussing Film. They said uh, Euphoria Season 3 will be moving from high school to adulthood. It is planned to make the show's edgy theme of sex and drugs less risque. Risky. Risky or risque? They said risky. <laughs> I don't know what that even means. Is well, this just because, like because, Sam Levinson look, getting spanked by no, HBO like, look, because he, he went too far? Adults doing drugs and having sex is more acceptable in movies and television than kids that are under 18. So why exactly? When they, when, when they do it with kids that are under 18, it's kind of done with the understanding that back in the day when they would show drug use and sex in, in, in high school sex, it would be like a PSA, don't do this or else. You know, this is bad, don't mm -hmm. do this. Whereas what they were showing was nothing like that, right? So when you do it with kids in college, you're not expected to hold to that same standard. I mean, you're not really expected to hold to that standard anymore anyways. But, like, you're allowed to get, you're probably going to get away with way more, and there's going to be way less critique of college kids behaving that way than high school kids. Well, on top of that, um, they also had a death in the cast. Angus Cloud died of an overdose. So yep. he's... He had this beloved character that's now not going to be in it anymore. Um, they also had another cast member just leave the show because she got into a fight with Sam Levinson, yep. Barbie Ferreira. Uh, yeah, so Barbie Ferreira got in a fight with Sam Levinson, left the show permanently. So you don't have her anymore. Sydney Sweeney's career is booming and she probably doesn't want to waste her time with this anymore. Same Zendaya yeah. as well. Like Zendaya was already the most famous person on the show. Zendaya has better things to do as well. Jacob Elordi as well. I mean, Jacob Elordi is also doing well with his career. So he doesn't need Euphoria anymore either. Mm -hmm. um, the only one I can think of who actually still needs this show is Alex Demi. And if you ask why, it's because... You haven't heard of Alex Demi? Yeah. <laughs> so, Which explains why she needs it. Or why they need ex exactly. Why they need it. Exactly. Um, but I offered my take on this. It's just my prediction that Euphoria is going to get canceled after this. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not even providing like a timeline for when they're going to resume filming, it seems like chances are it's just over for this show. So I said, I'm happy Euphoria got canceled. It's a shame that this obscenity got greenlit in the first place. 
Sam Levinson is about as psychologically depraved and porn addled as Dan Schneider, except he's much worse at hiding it. If the show never comes back, good riddance. And that's just the facts. Um, somehow Dan Schneider got away with making sexual jokes in kids shows for decades. Um, Sam Levinson just decided to make porn into a TV show and everyone accepted it as art. <laughs> but then he got found out because the idol sucked yeah. and at least people liked Euphoria. Once he ruined the idol and, you know, besmirched his own name with that awful show, nobody has the patience for him anymore. They're done with his perversion. It's over for they, him. No, 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 I disagree with that. I don't think they give a crap about his perversion. I think they give a crap about whether it gets good reviews and have people watch or not. You think that the people I think he at got HBO, some real pushback you think for the people at HBO if if he made the the idol and it was you and it was received the same way that euphoria was by critics i don't think we would be having this conversation i don't think it has anything to do with perversion because that would be under the assumption that people in hollywood have a moral issue with perversion and they do not that's a good point i mean in in the content no they have no problem with perversion but i think he did get some considerable pushback for over sexualizing lily rose depp um, to the point where it was gratuitous and they called it misogynistic. So it's only bad if it's misogynistic, I was guys. Told that, uh, look, I was told that uh, as long as the Especially the egg wants, scene. I was told that as long as the woman approves of doing the... This It's so funny. This is an argument that's going on in wrestling circles right now. They keep having these arguments like how women in wrestling used to have to do these bra and panty matches and these bikini contests. And somehow that was demeaning. But when they dress in a demeaning way now, it's not because they choose to do it while conveniently leaving out the fact that they were not forced to do it in the past. There was just less options for them mm -hmm. then, right? So like if Lily Rose Depp has no problem with doing the creepy weird egg scene, then if that's misogynistic and she doesn't think so, then how, am I supposed to care? I don't give a crap. Like if, if Lily Rose Depp wants to debase herself and do that scene, that's her business. No, but I, she doesn't get to come back 10 years from now and say it's misogynistic if you were championing the idea when it happened. I, I totally agree. And I don't think that Lily Rose Depp is some kind of victim. But I'm just saying the way that Hollywood is going to talk about these issues, they will use misogyny as the battering ram, I guess. Or, you know, the they will use the term misogyny mm. to criticize sam levinson for being a sexual pervert instead of just saying he's a sexual pervert they have to make it something woke basically they need a woke excuse to criticize this guy and they found it mm -hmm. in the idol um although lily rose depp didn't say anything critical of him but yeah they're gonna have to resume this in like 2040 and they're all going to be like dressing up like club teens <laughs> trying to blend in with the extras. It's not going to be a pretty picture. Yeah. Um, and how far the mighty have fallen, really. Another one uh, looked at like all of these cast members, especially like, you know, also Hunter Schaefer. Yeah. Hunter Schaefer had a great career takeoff after Euphoria. Being realistic, the Euphoria cast no longer needs Euphoria, especially after Barbie Ferreira's departure, Angus Cloud's passing, not to add to the fact that we shouldn't let Sam Levinson make I mean, projects, honestly, especially okay, after the there's idol. An, there's an argument to be made here. Like, look, as bad as, as morally reprehensible as you find the show, it's helped launch the careers of a lot of actors. Like beyond, I guess Jacob Elordi did those. What was he the one who did the, the kissing booth? Okay, but the series. point is, into adulthood, it's launched a lot of successful careers. Mm -hmm. So it's an indicative of where the culture is. That exactly. people are like, oh, I'll watch this show and then I'll go follow them to whatever projects they're doing now. Zendaya was already kind of famous beforehand, but Sydney Sweeney. Jacob Elordi, Hunter Schaefer, I almost said Hunter Avalon, uh, Hunter Schaefer and others, right? That's, uh, I think they'll look to make more shows like this, not less. I don't think that they have any problem with every year coming up with some subversive new idea for something that's going to be morally reprehensible. I mean, I just love how they think that sex, drugs, and degeneracy is subversive in 2024. What they call subversive. Like, they really think that that's subverting our expectations. Yeah. We're gonna do something that you've never seen before. 
teens having sex and doing drugs. Well, I guess the subversive like, element to them would be and, the fact oh, that and, it's not done as a PSA. And they're gay. Yeah. <laughs> and they're non-binary. And they have an OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole thing is just such a joke to me. I, it's really not meant, clearly, it's not meant to, to appeal to Gen Z. Because this has nothing in common what with what Gen, Gen Z, Z what would experiences. What a Gen Z TV show look like? You really can't make a TV show out of a life that's so boring and dreadful, can you? Can you make a TV show about someone whose entire existence reasons why. belongs on Tumblr and on Stan Twitter and arguing with people in comment sections? Yeah. Can you? And, and making TikToks. You can't really make a TV show about that. Yeah. So they have to make up a fake version of Gen Z that has um, actual social interaction, takes risks, um, you know, has defining, individuating personality traits. I saw your I instead saw your, of being in a hive mind. I saw your tweet the other day about how these shows were causing. What, what did you say there? <laughs> okay. Okay. I said this in a way that was kind of okay. You you realized it was it was like partly tongue in cheek, yes, right? Yes, I did. Okay, but that's because I know you. Okay, <laughs> I tweeted: there are TV shows causing people to have premarital sex, and we need to ban those TV shows. Look, when I read this, I was like, this is exactly something me and her would argue about on the show, <laughs> but we'd be arguing about the word cause, and <laughs> we need to ban these TV shows. It was partially a joke. No. Partially serious, though. I It just came to mind because I was looking at this um, debate that Jordan Peterson was having with Destiny. Yeah. What a waste of my time, by the way. It was the most, like, uninteresting thing I've ever watched. But Destiny was just imitating a conservative for a second. And he said, well, what if a conservative said that there are TV shows causing people to have premarital sex, so we need to ban those TV shows. I mean, that would be crazy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's actually my take. I know. That's actually, unironically, one of the pillars of my worldview. Mm. Um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Anyway, let's finish up these Super Chats. Zach Yandel said, first Supa to PCC. I like y'all, stay savvy. Thank you. We'll try. Thank you. Shane H. Wilder said, Brett, are you saying I'm not intelligent for using an iPhone? You know what? Never mind. That tracks. I don't think that's what I said. Is that what I Can said? Can you only understand an Android if you have a certain IQ? Probably. Is that, uh, that what's going on? Um, Manic Mustache said, Pearl just big mad because she was cast for that Untouchables reboot. What? Uh, I have no idea. I'm guessing. I don't know what that means. Corey Anderson said, hey, dudes, if you got married, would you share that info with us? In reference to what? If you got married, would you share that info with people who watch this show, I guess? Oh, like if, if I got married? Yeah. Yes, I would, I would share that with you guys. Of course I would share that with you guys. Yeah. Of course. I mean, like, it's not like you would be invited to the wedding, yeah, but... Yeah, like uh, maybe I'll live stream the wedding from a camera in the... Oh, you'll wear the Apple Vision Pro yes, goggles yes. and you'll live stream straight to yeah. the PCC channel. That's first that's, person. That view. is what we'll do. That's what we'll do. If Amazing. I, if, if and when I get married, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> um, and as for me, like, yeah, I guess I just wouldn't think that hard about it. <laughs> Big Dave sent 99 cents without a message. Thank you for that. 200 watt studio said girl on plane. Of course, I don't <laughs> have to eat less. I'm a plus size traveler. Of course, I don't have to eat less. That if there's any social media trend I'm over, it's the, I'm this, of course this. I want all of those people to be banished to the gulag. If you're making yeah. one of those videos, straight to the gulag. I'm a TikToker. Of course I'm in the gulag. Yep. 200 Watt Studio said, didn't Diddy infamously buy Bieber a Lambo? Was that part of that video, the, the video of the, them talking outside the... I don't think you can... Is that it? I feel like he just said that he was going to let, let Justin use, use the Lambo yeah. like when he turned 16 or something. Mm. I don't know. Justin Bieber at 16 did not need anyone to buy a car for him. No, so he already had plenty of money. He was definitely, yeah, in the it's position really to buy himself was, uh, a car. I watched, um, like, somebody posted a clip of, like, one of his old music videos. 
Uh, I think it was for the song Company. And there's this part. It was a good song. It was this part of the video. It's it's like a tour video. And he like jumps onto like the back of what like of a of a truck at a venue and then runs across the top of it. I'm like, oh he probably owns it. That's why he feels like he can just jump on like, yeah. it's like a van, it's like a moving type van. And I'm like, so he just walks down the glass. And I'm like, it's cause <laughs> to him, a sixty thousand dollar car is as much as what I spend on an energy drink. So he doesn't really comp- it doesn't really compute that that was money that could have been, you know saved when you're a teenage multimillionaire, the world is your playground exactly basically it's good that he got that out of his system though and turned relatively normal i feel like you can kind of give Haley credit for that it's not common not god that well i mean you can see that he was christian before he met Haley, mm-hmm. right so maybe it was getting married that caused him to I mean, find some normalcy is. and maybe routine. Maybe what it is, she threatens him. She's like, "Look, Alec will just come by." Alec's gonna, Alec's gonna, gonna, gonna get you. Yeah. My uncle Alec is gonna get you. Um, maybe it's that. Shane H. Wilder said, "There's fat, and then there is damn." She is in the latter category. Oh, you mean damn? Like you think she's attractive? That's what you mean, right? No, that's that's not what he means. Is that is He's that what you mean? To the movie Friday. Two hundred watt studio said, "Is Combs in custody?" Not yet. Cuss Diddy. We'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, Brett, soon. do you get it? I, I got it. I can read the it? spelling. It's, okay. I'm, I don't feel well enough for this shit. Let's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Jacobs said bad boy for life in prison. Ah, well, you know, that's, that's a fair point. 200 watt studio. Did he or didn't he? Did he do it? I think Diddy might have done it. You did. Shane H. Wilder said when TMZ is the only three-letter agency that knows where Diddy is, then something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Nope, just proves that private sector can always do it better than government. (laughs) Sorry. Big Dave said the other hashtag PCC pets is for Pinal County Community College. It's for their pet adoption program. Yeah, I mean, I would see those. Like, Hmm. so I would see those when I first started doing PCC pets, right? But... I didn't see any updates to that tag in a while. I have to log in again. This is so annoying. Someone saying that Kanye wasn't famous in 97. Well, it was 2007 was when that uh yes. was when that, that one happened. No control said who is they though. I don't know, it's a good question. It's a question for the ages. Shane H. Wilder said safeguards in place. Yeah, sure. Well, okay. Rolls so m- the point is, is like when, when they ask for like a, a genuine response from a corporation, you're the idiot if you think you're going to get a genuine response from a corporation. Yes. Maybe not genuine as in from the heart, but could we get genuine as in not lying? That would be nice. Right? I get it. Like, I, I just, I, <laughs> Genuine as in you're I not lying expect, to my face? I just expect them to be doing that. If you don't expect a lot, then you'll never be let down. So true. <laughs> Pat the Plumber said, yay, Brett's alive. Oh, wait, we read that one. Ryan Guys, said... Guys, we're almost at a third crisis party. Uh, two cents. I'm thinking there was a blanket parental consent that was signed, and it was a matter of being kicked off the show or getting gigs. Oh yeah, so it's like okay, so you sign this consent that uh, this actress will have to kiss an actor, um, and without mentioning that actor's age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so funny because I've seen that. So that actor in that scene, I, I remember because he has a very distinct voice. He has a. He did a show. He did an episode of like the show Bones. Where he played like a like, it was like a a cult like not a cult. It was like a group of women who were all trying to get pregnant from their boyfriends in high school. It's like one of those things where they were all gonna raise the kids together. Psycho behavior. Yeah, but in the early two thousands, right? And he's like, I I haven't had sex. I'm a Christian. I just remember that guy's voice. So he's probably was probably around that same time. <laughs> That's the line that you remember that yeah, like sticks like, I'm not out. Having here. sex. I'm a Christian. <laughs> That was the one that he'll be remembered but that was, for. But that, that was like a, that was based on a real thing that happened, right? A bunch of girls at a school that happened in real life. Yeah, that happened in real life. So that was Did it actually, work? I, I, I'm. My guess is no, but what do I know? In the show, though, in the episode, how does like, anyone know that it, that happened? In, the, in this episode, though, like six women all get pregnant from one kid, like from one guy they go to school with. Yeah, and the kid's just too stupid to realize that you know these women could ask for child support at any time. Even though they're all in high school. Yeah. 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 
Shane H. Wilder said fishermen's friend are extremely strong cough drops to the point that all others are essentially candy. Also, Mary's takes on X yesterday were on point. Have you tried Fisherman's I've, Friend? Nope. No. Uh, but they, they do eventually just end up tasting like candy most of the time anyway. <laughs> the last of my kind said Fisherman's Friend. I use them in the lip like zins. <laughs> Yikes. John Quixote. Thank you guys, by the way. John Quixote said, read this as daddy's home at first glance and thought it was an out of character way of announcing your return. <laughs> Glad to see you're feeling better. Daddy's home. <laughs> From the title. <laughs> what? Daddy's home got raided. What the? Daddy's home got raided. Oh, no. Oh, no. Shane H. Wilder said Mary watches Peterson versus Destiny because she enjoys watching public beatings. <laughs> Trying to pick up tips for the next time Brett gets out of line. LOL, JK. It's not easy being the aggrieved party here. That LOL, JK is carrying a, a lot, lot there. there. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, no, damn, like is in, or like how is Shamu fitting on the plane? <laughs> Fair enough. Not Shamu. The Manic Mustache said, I'm a super chatter. Of course, my comments are out of context and nonsensical. It's worse. Wow, that's so it's, quirky of you. It's worse when, when the grammar's bad and it makes, because I'm already bad at reading. So then when the grammar's bad, it's even worse. <laughs> oh, this one's out of pocket. Micah Kaziki said, I haven't heard sexual abuse allegations from kids in the cobalt mines. Kids yearn for the mines and the mines provide a goodish life. I mean, isn't that kind of what they like? They're like, we get rid of the mines <laughs> and then somebody just creates Minecraft. The kids, the kids yearn for the mines. They do. They do. There's no Dan Schneider in the mines. Alejandro Reyes sent $20 saying, Brett's sick. That's sad. It would be a shame if we could keep him here. Uh, well, we're going to stay anyways. We're going to hang out until until 5 o'clock. I, I would never dare leave early. Also, guys, I do want to remind everyone to check out Gamer Maids at 5 p.m. I keep telling Chris that I'll try to, like, shout it out on the way out of the show, and I always forget because I'm a bad person. But so, it takes the viewers there anyway. They yes, don't have a choice. But they, they should check it out. Uh, but you guys are welcome to keep me here uh, with Super Chats. I, I will happily do so. Um, what do you think the out of all the stories with the Diddy stuff? Which part do you think is the craziest? I think it's I really do think that they were putting evidence on those planes and then just even if okay so even if it's not you that, laughed at the idea when I said it at first. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like off air. What I no, it's you were like, oh come on, they have evidence on the plane. They're just flying an empty plane over to no. So what I better than that is the idea of just flying the plane to get them off your trail, right? Even without evidence on there, the idea that I think they said he's got more than one private jet. Yes. He's got two, right? So you send them in opposite directions, and then Diddy flies commercial. That's why he was at Miami. Where would airport. they? Where would they look for him? Where, like, where, like, where's the last place you look for Diddy on the on the commercial airliner? I guess. I mean, he, and he sits in coach. Maybe he was doing that to confuse media outlets who are covering the incident. Also, those blue pants he was wearing were a crime. But also, you mentioned the private jet trackers are yeah. behind by like 12 hours. Yep. Oh, maybe that's what he's doing. He's taking ta Taylor Swift loans him the jet. But that's how I know it, it was real because his private jet flew out of LA at 9 a.m. Mm. yesterday morning, LA time, obviously. Yeah. And then I found out that that happened way like later at night last night. So actually that checks out. He got a he, I think he got some type of heads up from yeah. like the government, and he's like, "Yo, no, but like sometimes they actually do give you a heads up." I don't think they do that for a seizure for a search that big. I think he's got an insider who let him in on it, and, and he's like, "Sorry, kids, you're gonna have to be the ones to get arrested. I'm out of here." That's, you know, I mean, there's a possibility okay, so that especially uh, it, he has what connections you're is with like the feds. I don't think. If we're to take under the premise that what they were doing was to try and destroy evidence, which makes him the, you know, the adversary here, I don't think they give him a courtesy heads up and give him time to destroy the evidence or to hide the I don't evidence. know, but look, TMZ is giving us more information than the FBI right now. Mm -hmm. I trust TMZ more than the feds. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Way more. Uh, by far, because they're the ones that are, ac are actually doing the investigation, not... Government. Allegedly, Ruckus says Diddy was driving the cargo ship. 
That could have been it. It was his first time driving a boat. Tacti Plati said, don't review Velma. Brett lost years of his life. Well, look, that's the intention, right? Yeah. Corey Anderson said, Brett is sick. Hashtag Mocha's revenge. <laughs> is this Mocha's revenge? No. Mocha yes. has a voodoo doll of Brett. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd have a, uh, they, I'd have by a the voodoo way, doll of the cat. They want daddy's home merch. No, thanks. No, I, I don't think Mary would approve. <laughs> It's too, it's too vague. Is that you? Uh, Wait, did, who is somebody posted? Uh, I saw like a thing today where like somebody said that he wouldn't let his kid call him, their kid called him daddy. Why? Uh, because they have porn brain in their. Like, well, probably. Yeah. yeah. That's if that's the case, that's a you problem. Exactly. exactly. But as for us selling merch, we're not going to sell that merch. Mm -hmm. um, DCNC said you got COVID, Brett. Where's your GD mask? Yeah, Mary doesn't say that. In fact, I try to keep the using the Lord, taking the Lord's name in vain to a minimum on this channel most of the time. I do pretty well. <laughs> we love that for you. <laughs> I, I, do, I do pretty well. Yeah, not, you do. Not doing that. Um, for, you know, for like a lot of my adult life, I didn't say the F word at all. I said frick. I got most out of, of your adult life. Like before, in my, most of my 20s, yeah. Like frick. Why though? Just out of habit. Got it. Like. I had a friend who didn't say it, and it kind of caught on, and so I stopped saying it and then didn't pick it back up until he moved, and then I wasn't around him as much. But you said all the other curse words? Probably. No, I mean, there's ones that I don't use a lot, but yeah. Did you curse around your parents? Um, no. Uh, my mom, probably. That's definitely a white kid thing. I didn't, I, I, <laughs> I didn't, did, I didn't curse at them. No, 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 no not at them. No. Um... I don't, I don't know if I... My dad probably would have called out some cursing earlier on. I think I pretty much started getting away with it at like 16 or 17. That's fine. But look, I didn't do anything bad. So, you know, yep. you pick your battles, right? Shane H. Wilder said, guys, Brett didn't have Sheets tacos all last week. He's not sick. He's suffering from withdrawals. That's completely plausible. Actually, you're putting together the evidence and... Yeah, I, I th I'm willing to believe it. Nah, I did watch a video of the, the girl who does gal versus food, who, who she eats like the 12 uh, Krispy Kremes. What not I hate about it is that she doesn't even eat them normally. She like smushes food together to yeah. compress it and it looks disgusting. But she's expanded her content now. Now she makes like cooking videos where she starts cooking. Like food. normal amounts of food? Yes. Wow. But the, because okay. the videos aren't about how much she eats, it's about making the food. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I got Alejandro Reyes for ten dollars. Says, "What are the cha uh, the chances someone in Diddy's circle uh, didn't ATK or K someone? What does that mean? I don't know what the ATK is, or is the K the is K kill? Att oh, attempt to kill or kill someone? Attempt to kill. Uh, probably. Uh, I mean, we can't know that for sure. Well, look, one of the allegations in the Rodney Jones lawsuit is that." he actually did attempt to kill someone yep. um, at one of their producers' camps during the making of his album. Yep. And that his son was involved in it and that his cleanup guy told the cops that this guy who got injured was injured, he was shot in a drive-by shooting rather than in the bathroom by Diddy. So that is actually one of the allegations. It is crazy. Which we'll find out, I guess. How much of like rap music in the late '90s really was just the commercialized, vi like, art of violence, <laughs> like well, pe committing crimes and glorifying crimes, and people like me from the suburbs who like enjoyed listening to it. Is it glorifying it, or is it just glorifies. not condemning it? It glorifies it. Yeah. It glorifies it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the Manic Mustache said, when my dad's spot got raided back in the 90s, my grandfather made sure the kids were clear. At the very least, Diddy did definitely do some dirt baggery. Well, then he should have made sure the kids were clear and not leave the kids at home during the raid. Well, to be fair, the, the kids are adults. Yeah. The kids are Justin, I think, is 29. King is 25. If they're committing crimes with their dad, that's on them. Yeah, but, he, but the dad should still 
put self-sacrifice in front of that well, if he is pushing them into it. It seems life. like he just doesn't care about anyone but himself. I remember when, I, so I was at, a, I was staying at a friend's house in Philadelphia. I, I think I've told the story off air before. Um, and his place got raided by the DEA mm -hmm. in like 2008. And I just remember, um, it was really, really f funny because they come in there and like, like they, they knew exactly who was going to be there. Uh, except for like two people because I had just got in town. So they didn't know me, but they had my description and everything. And I didn't know anything about what was going on at this time. Um, and he didn't get arrested for anything. They didn't find anything, but it was really, really funny because they basically ushered us all out, made us uh, IDs, uh, spread your legs, uh, pat everyone down, see what's going on. And then um, I'm picturing them doing that to these kids here, except for they're doing it in this 20, this however many million dollar mansion. Next to the pool. Next, <laughs> next, next to, to the, the infinity, infinity pool. pool. <laughs> Uh, hands on the pool. Hands on the pool. <laughs> they like jump into the pool. Hands on the... There's like a secret escape hatch in the pool. Hands on the cold plunge. Hands on the cold plunge. <laughs> yeah. So bizarre. Um, Shane H. Wilder said, I sound like Father Mike until the F-bombs drop. There you go. Yeah. You know, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with a little spice. Shane H. Wilder, gosh, golly G. LOL. Let's get a fourth crisis party. It would make up for the fact that uh, I didn't come into work yesterday. <laughs> so, I, oh, here's the thing: the the problem with being sick is it's not so much that you feel it's it's not just how crap you feel; it's how much it fucks with your sleep, makes it impossible to get any rest. So, basically, yesterday it was the type of thing where I had such a bad fever that I was kind of in and out of it for like periods of time, and your dreams are really, really vivid and effed up, and you can't remember what they were, but you just remember they left you feeling really, really uncomfortable. When you're done because that's what happens when you get a fever it was all about diddy probably it was all the diddy doings oh that's the other problem with these type of things it's like uh when when all this stuff is going on it's like i'd rather not even know about it than have to just sit online and like i guess it would have been just as bad if i had been at work because we would have been talking about it at work too well the annoying thing about it is these things always come out after we're live anyway so we would be covering it today anyway yeah why, what time did this come out yesterday? I started seeing things about it, like, at least at 6 p.m. Okay, so, so it wasn't earlier? I no, thought it was, okay. I don't think so, at least, but maybe I just wasn't looking. Chapter 1 says, Brett, did you get vaxxed? I, no. No, I have not been vaxxed. I didn't, uh, I didn't work anywhere that required me to do so, and I, I, I think I had COVID. I got really, really sick right at the start of COVID in, like, <laughs> November of 2019. Like, mm -hmm. seven days of pure health sick sickest i've ever been and i think that was probably the only time i ever had covid hmm. otherwise i i go by the uh i live by the philosophy that you just if you don't address it it can't hurt you so i i've been sick since then but if i don't get a test that says i've got covid then i guess i don't have covid i don't think i've had it to be honest hmm. or if i have like obviously i've gotten colds since 2020 but if any of those were COVID, everyone is being super dramatic about nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that was my philosophy. But also, my answer to that is like, no, but also like, none of your business. You mm. know what I mean? I'm just tired of everyone asking, you know, be, being into your like personal medical information, regardless of the reason, Yeah, I guess. Yep. But yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I, I feel mildly better today, but not as much as I was hoping to. Because somebody may, somebody pointed out, uh, I said yesterday, uh, when, I, when I wrote out the post for the community tab, I said, I'll be back tomorrow. And then when after I typed that, I was like, what if I'm not back tomorrow? What if I still feel like shit? What if you're dead? Yeah, what if I die? <laughs> what if I'm not back tomorrow and I just die? Then I, not only am I dead, I'm a liar, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tim Smith says, I wear a mask in the shower. Derp, derp, derp. I'm sure it's protecting you. Uh, touchy subject says, Brett, babies, the real Bitcoin. Yes. Unvaxxed sperm. The... What? Uh, have you, uh, did you see that like Bitcoin, like it crashed out for a while and it went back down to like 60. And I was like, I need to buy more. <clears throat> and I, now no. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Um, I don't have any. Uh, no, I don't I have seen... any crypto. So I, I don't seen... pay attention much. I, you know, crypto is just astrology for men, right? <laughs> yes. Are you willing to accept that? Astrology? No, but crypto, I didn't know crypto it was, it's is Ma just Mary astrology. Kay, no, for Mary men. Kay for men. What? Mary Kay for men. But Mary Kay was always a depreciating asset. 
<laughs> that's the that's the the meme that was going around. Is crypto is just Mary Kay for men. But they do you wait? Okay, as someone who is invested in cryptocurrencies, you don't want other people to be invested in cryptocurrencies, right? Uh, I'm only invested in Bitcoin, and I just put a small amount of each paycheck into. But it. you don't want other people to buy it because you don't want it to be in demand because there's a fixed amount right you don't want yeah well you'd want it to be in so demand you're not trying to convince anybody <laughs> else to get into it uh i wish i had gotten into it sooner you're I, not I, like gonna become a door-to-door -door bitcoin salesman i should i should absolutely do that but actually why isn't that a thing yet door-to-door -door <laughs> bitcoin salesman you can like you've yeah. got everybody's got a crypto bro friend that will try to sell them on the latest coin <laughs> Uh, yep. All right. Oh, what is that? From Sketch Therapy says, that's not how the market works, Mary. Technically, if more people are buying it, then, it's, then the, the demand goes up, which yes. means the price goes up, which means I can sell high. Do you want to sell high or are you just yes. trying to buy more? You don't want to buy low. When it's you don't low. want you certainly don't want to buy high and sell no, low. No, I you know. Want to buy low and sell high. <laughs> but why don't you just buy when it's low and not sell? That's what I have been doing. I haven't sold any. That's my point. It's yeah. like. Ooh, the manic mustache. You want it to lose, uh, lose value so that you buy more, right? And then no, it no, just does so, the typical ebb and flow. So if you buy every paycheck or something like you no know, uh, dollar cost averaging, if it steadily rises, mm -hmm. uh, the manic mustache says PCC word of the day alliteration. It's when the front part of the of the word rhyme. Uh, the more you know. Wait, what? PCC word of the day, alliteration. It's when the front part of the word rhyme, it's, there's an object file, like a- I don't know I, what I that know is. What you, you put some weird symbol in There's a symbol chat. there I can't read. <laughs> um, Alejandro Reyes said, can you make masks of each other and wear them for a whole show and speak for each other? I'll pay at least another 10 bucks to see this spectacle. Is 10 bucks worth that, that much? I'm not wearing a Mary Investment mask. in the bit. I'm not wearing a Mary mask, and I'm certainly not doing a Mary voice. I you could wear the wig. Me... Oh, right? I'm definitely not doing that. Look, well, I really, don't... what I wanted to do was um, swap where you don't wear glasses and I do wear glasses. As long as I don't have to actually click on anything or read anything, we could do that, but I don't have contacts, so. You don't even have, like, one um, disposable pair that you could wear? I can't put contacts in. Guys, who in the chat, the, the people in the chat, if you wear contacts or if you wear glasses, are you able to put contacts in? Because I can't put them in my eye. Okay, I can't do it. Well, I know you can't. I couldn't either. But you definitely just have to, like, grit your teeth and just, like, go for it. Look, my glasses are part of my charm. People just learn to, to accept it. I have to. Also, it, it keeps me from, sh like, shaving fully. Because me with glasses and fully shaved looks horrible. Me without glasses and fully shaved looks mildly better. I think I showed you at one point that time I was on IRL and I, I just shaved my face completely and I had blonde hair. I live and you in, didn't have your glasses I on, live, right? Yeah, I t I, yeah, you I, took your glasses off. Well, I don't ever wear my glasses in IRL because of the lights. But then there was no there. contrast. Yeah. There was no balance. That, uh, that image is, is awful. Like, <laughs> like the, uh, the image of me. Can with, we get merch with that picture of you on it? We sh oh, we should. We, Can so we have says, a, a t-shirt with blonde, clean shaven Brett? Oh. I was, I, I just shaved, looking, I shaved over the weekend. So I, 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 I told Olivia that I would like, I would, cause my starting to regrow, like it was getting long again, yeah. my beard. And I, I sh show people these pictures of like, when my beard would be really long, like down to here, and it just looked horrible. And she's like, it's getting dangerously close to that length again. It's, it's time to shave. I was like, I'll shave on Saturday. It's Saturday came. She's like, are you going to shave? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I gave in and finally shaved. I was like, I guess I did. I, guess, I did say that I would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, one more there from DC and C says, Brett, goddamn, I've had enough of this shit for today. Not until we get that fourth crisis party. When we get the fourth crisis party. We're then. closer to four than, than three. Not. So... Let me see. We need for about like let's say thirty five yep. dollars. Math is tough. Um, yeah, we need thirty five dollars to make it to the fourth crisis party. In case anyone is interested in, I'm interested. Doing so, that's what they should do. <laughs> and I'm willing to just hang out to do so because I feel bad about missing. That's the thing. I, I I have a naturally guilty conscience. So even though I felt crappy when i woke up today i'm like i have to go into work i can't miss work two days in a row right i don't like that feeling of feeling like i'm not at my job 
That's why you I, are sick, so <laughs> there's nothing to feel bad about. That's not how I'm wired. We that's got a forty nine ninety nine super chat from Steve Kralik. He said, this is the first time in weeks I've been able to catch a full show. Live in three weeks. My job is difficult, but not as hard as yours. Let's have a moment of silence for our two favorite podcasters, Marilyn and Bert. Look, I I'm I'm willing to. I'm say dying to know what your job is. I, look, this is one of the I want to know what your job is, dude. One of the funny things is like there are aspects of our job that I get frustrated with. Like like when we were when we were organizing the Diddy segment yesterday was it was about organizing finding all the information reading through all. All the little bits of stuff that you need to know figuring out like what visuals you're going to show and all this stuff and it's frustrating and annoying sometimes and overwhelming because it's like i get really <clears throat> like uh my brain kind of overloads with too much information because i'm a dummy and but to call that difficult like nobody's gonna want to hear it. it's like somebody working manual labor somebody out there building society doesn't want to hear how your job is difficult well we i got into i was on the discord i i, I was uh I like joined Olivia on the Discord channel on Friday night, I think. Was it Friday night when they were doing the Discord show? And I got into a discussion with a guy about this, and I, he just didn't really understand what I was trying to say. I was pointing out how Matt Walsh was in a losing argument when he brought up like the work hour, you know, when all the conservative, like the dorky conservative dads are like, work harder, glass ceiling, uh, work 80 hours a week. Ben Shapiro's like, work until you die, right? Like nobody wants to hear that, right? Nobody wants to hear somebody who who broadcast from an air conditioned room talking to a camera, tell them to work harder. Because even if your job has more to it than just what it seems, which is just like they think you just turn a camera on and start talking when that's not really what the job is, it doesn't matter because it's ha making those comparisons with people who do actual physical labor is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. And then it gets into the discussion about like jobs that have a net positive for society. And I'm like, I am proud to to have a job that creates exactly zero good for society. Zero. Uh, if people are here, you can say that we do have a net positive. Yes. Um, effect on society. If, if people are here to watch, then that's, that's the effect that we have. Um, but I mean, just because there are things that you can complain about for any job exactly. that's just how it is yeah i mean there's not going to be a perfect job out there shane h wilder said i've never tried contacts glasses make me look smarter than i actually am although there is a photo of me without glasses because of light glare yeah i never take pictures with my glasses on because it ends up just with a reflection in the glass you can't actually see anything um a couple more Corey there. anderson I'm not going to read that. Yes, <laughs> said, keep the change, you filthy animal. Thank you. All right, guys. We I mean, will. We we're about to get that fourth. Correct. We got the fourth. Wait, did I miss buddy. one? I think that's all of them. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Before we go, would you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Mary, let everybody know where they can find you. You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X. That is also Mary Archived. All right, guys, if you'd like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. Dustin Nguyen says, Burt works hard. Yes. I'm going to make a shirt that says, Burt works hard. Can it have the picture of you with blonde hair on yes. IRL? Yes, we can do that. <laughs> One more here from Olivia Claire. Brett, what do you do for work? Yes. So when I was on this Discord, um, when I was on this talking to this person on the Discord, like on their Discord show on Friday night, somebody like asked what I did for work. <laughs> On a Timcast Discord. Love that. And it was I was like I was like, well that's an interesting question. What do I do for work? You should just make something up on the spot. <laughs> it, I was, uh, it was funny. I was like, well, I, I was like but the point was I was actually arguing on this like for this dude's argument. I was like, look, um, like I like I have a like as like, most people don't understand that or like most people in this space forget that they don't that the audience doesn't want to hear about how difficult you have at working a job where you just talk to a camera. And he's like, well, what do you do for work? And I'm like, I'm like, uh, I talk to a camera. That's the point. That was literally the yeah. point I was trying to make. And he's like, have you ever worked a manual labor job? I'm like, yes, that's the point I'm trying to make that like the jobs I've had before 
physically pay, like my job now pales in comparison to jobs I've had physically beforehand. But it was just really funny because it was a Timcast Discord server. And I mean, he was arguing with you about. He was, I think he was drinking. It was a Friday wow. night. You know, it was, it was fun. Okay. Uh, one more here from DC and C says, hope the black lung improves. Uh, you're telling me, bro. All right. If you'd like to follow me, Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasevic on both of those platforms. PCC is here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, noon Pacific, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. If you would prefer to listen rather than watch, you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show, Facebook and not TikTok at PopCultureCrisis, Instagram at PopCultureCrisisPod. One more here from Alejandro Reyes says, my first permanent job out of school is literally the perfect job, though. Congratulations. That's awesome. Like that's, that's great. the best thing you can have going. For you. Thank All right, you. Guys. Okay. Guys, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.